Chapter 4 Understanding Buddhism For one to survive in this world is not easy. Life's pressures are everywhere. Disaster strikes without warning and society's moral fibre is unravelling. It seems there is no choice but to go with the flow. But then there are moments when any thinking person must ask, must it really always be this way? Is it possible to break free from suffering? How can one find the light? If we are sensitive and curious, these questions will drive us to investigate life's meaning, to escape from suffering, and to transcend ourselves. When we come to see the need for spiritual refuge in a deceitful and merciless world, we may at last turn towards Buddhism. The Buddha's Appearance in the World A long time ago, the Buddha, Kesapa, taught the living beings of this world. There was one among his disciples who, throughout many lifetimes, had pursued the Bodhisattva path. He bemoaned the fate of the universe and pitied humankind. And through myriad lifetimes of dedicated practice, he perfected the powers and virtues of a Bodhisattva to a supernal degree. This Bodhisattva observed the world and its sufferings, its old age, sickness and death, the hardships of competition and survival, the pains which sentient beings visit one another in an unending spiral of revenge. On and on it went, without relief. So he made a great vow that in his next life he would, for the sake of all living beings, become a Buddha. The Bodhisattva was reborn in Kaplavastu with the name Siddhartha Gautama, as the son of the king and queen of the realm. Prince Siddhartha was raised in the palace and enjoyed all manner of earthly pleasures. After he had grown to childhood, the prince again observed the old age, sickness and death of all living things and lamented the world's suffering. Thus did he give rise to a heart of profound mercy. He would often sit beneath a tree and ponder the reality of suffering, attempting to uncover the mysteries of life and death. In order to find a way to transcend the pains of the world, the prince, at the age of 19, left his family's palace to pursue the life of a homeless seeker of truth. He first sought out the most distinguished spiritual teachers of the age, mastering their techniques and methods, but he found that they were unable to guide him towards final liberation. Finally, he resolved to rely on his own will and intuition and to seek enlightenment on his own. At this time, the prince retreated to the bank of a river at the present site of Bodh Gaya to meditate under a lush bow tree. Seated on a cushion of grass and facing east, he proclaimed, Until I attain enlightenment, I will not leave this seat. The prince fixed himself on meditation and using his fortitude and compassionate awareness, he subdued the devilish tormentors sent by Mara, the evil one. Through the long night he never flagged nor wavered in his quest, and as he witnessed rising of the morning star, his mind was flooded with light. In a flash he became fully awake, a consummate Buddha. From that point on, the prince was known as Sakamani Buddha, the world-honoured one, Tagagatha, world-renowned teacher of gods and men. The world-honoured one observed the sufferings of the world and woefully lamented. 
How strange! How strange! All living things have the wisdom and virtue of a Buddha, but they are vainly attached and cannot awaken. The meaning of this verse is that all the beings of the world are, in their original nature, intrinsically perfect, each possessing a Buddha's wisdom and morality. It is only because they cling to their delusional beliefs that they cannot uncover their true selves. The well-honoured one's teaching plumbed the deepest secrets of existence and then surpassed them. This is Tathagatha's essence, the origin of the entire Dharma and the twelve divisions of the canon of scripture. Every Buddhist school takes the Buddha's omniscience as fundamental and all are derived from it. The World Honoured One spoke publicly for 49 years. It is difficult to say just how many beings listened to his teachings, realised liberation from suffering and attained everlasting joy. He died at the age of 80, seeking that his karma had been fulfilled and his teachings were complete. Thus he gave up his mortal body in a grave outside of the city where he had attained nirvana and returned to a state without birth or death, an everlasting joyous and peaceful realm. Thank you, Namo Ami Tufo.